As one of the first metals that humans began working with all the way back in the 5th millennium BC, copper has a long and storied history throughout the ages that most people don't seem to fully appreciate. Although it lacks the prestige lavished upon the precious metals, gold and silver, copper is actually a powerhouse commodity that has played a key role in laying the foundations for our modern civilization. This is because copper is absolutely essential for electricity generation. With both a high electrical and heat conductivity, copper can be found in the vast majority of transformers, electrical wiring cores, and conductors. While silver is the only metal more electrically conductive than copper, its prohibitive cost means that when it comes to electricity, copper is king of the metals. With the political push for a new green economy being hastily fast-tracked, the fact that the amount of copper needed to do so doesn't exist above ground at present time means a ton of new copper mines will have to be developed. No small task considering the enormous time and expense required to bring a copper mine online. This is extremely bullish for copper's future, and as more and more citizens in developing nations move from poverty into a new global middle class, that too will bring additional demand to bear on what is an extraordinarily precarious supply. It's not luxurious, but it sure is a reliable workhorse, and one of humanity's most invaluable resources. It's copper, on commodity culture. Copper is a reddish, extremely ductile metal with an atomic weight of 63.546, a melting point of 1,083 degrees Celsius, and a boiling point of 2,567 degrees Celsius. Copper is often found as a primary metal in basaltic lavas, molten rock enriched in iron and magnesium that forms basalt when it cools on the Earth's surface. Copper also occurs in combination with a variety of minerals, including azurite, malachite, bornite, calcasite, and more. Copper is present in sea corals, the ashes of seaweed, and even in human bones, muscles, and liver, as it is an essential mineral for all forms of life. The copper found in the human body is a trace element that helps catalyze hemoglobin formation. In blue-blooded mollusks and crustaceans, such as crabs and lobsters, copper plays the same role as iron in the hemoglobin of red-blooded life forms by transporting oxygen throughout the body. Copper is a popular building material that is prized by architects for exterior surfaces as it reacts with carbon dioxide in the air and changes into a very attractive green hue. In addition, when architectural copper gets rained on, copper atoms wash down the walls and kill any algae that tries to grow on the surface. The Statue of Liberty was actually manufactured using copper sheets hammered into shape and assembled over a framework of gigantic steel supports. Copper is also used in the manufacture of doorknobs and handles, railings, tools, musical instruments, pipes, gutters, jewelry, and more. But as mentioned at the top of the show, its real superpower is reliably conducting electricity. In fact, approximately 60% of all copper produced worldwide is used in electrical applications. Because copper is so efficient at conducting electricity, it makes for excellent cables due to the fact that only a small amount of copper is needed for them, thus allowing them to be thin enough to more easily fit into smaller duct spaces and be bent around tighter corners. Part of the reason copper is such a great conductor of electricity is its high free electron concentration. When a voltage is connected across copper, it pushes the free electrons and causes them to flow through the metal, creating an electrical current. A material with a lot of free electrons is able to carry a current more easily than one with a smaller charge density. Because there are so many electrons in copper to carry the charge, they don't need to move very fast. This means that they are much less likely to collide with atoms or impurities in the metal. Copper also assists with improving something called the current rating, which is the current a cable is able to carry safely without overheating. Copper wire is used in power generation, power transmission, power distribution, telecommunications, electronic circuitry, and all kinds of electrical equipment. In addition to the benefits already described, 
Copper wire boasts high tensile strength, ductility, deformation resistance, corrosion resistance, low thermal expansion, high thermal conductivity, ease of soldering, malleability, and ease of installation. Copper is a preferred metal in the manufacturing of integrated circuits, printed circuit boards, heat sinks, heat exchangers, electromagnets, vacuum tubes, cathode ray tubes, electrical motors, and a variety of renewable energy sources. Now that we have a grasp on the basics of copper, let's find out how it is extracted from the earth and processed into a usable form. The mining and processing of copper is a very complex undertaking that starts with ore containing less than 1% copper content and finishes with sheets of 99.99% pure copper known as cathodes, which are then made into a wide array of products that are essential to our modern way of life. The two most common types of copper ore are copper oxide and copper sulfide. Oxides are more abundant closer to the surface of the earth, but are lower grade than their sulfide counterparts. This means more ore needs to be extracted to get the same amount of copper, but as it is near surface, the cost of mining it ends up being lower, which makes it economically feasible as long as the geology of the copper deposit allows for a relatively straightforward operation. Sulfide ore is less abundant, but contains a greater amount of copper, and while processing costs are higher, the increased copper content means that more of the metal can be extracted. Each deposit of both copper oxide and sulfide has its own characteristics that make it either profitable enough to mine or present complications that make it uneconomical, and thus better left in the ground. With that being said, a rise in the price of copper can turn a previously uneconomic mine into a profitable one, and so evaluation of copper deposits needs to take both the current price and expected future price into consideration. It should be noted that copper is rarely found alone, and is most commonly found and mined alongside gold, silver, molybdenum, or iron, among other minerals. Open pit mining is the standard method of extracting copper. Open pit mining involves a series of stepped benches that start near surface and are dug deeper and deeper into the earth over time. Boring machinery is then employed to drill holes into the rock and explosives are deposited into the drill holes and detonated to break up the rock into smaller chunks. The blasted rocks are then loaded into specialized haul trucks, trains, or shuttle cars to transport the ore from the blasting site to a processing facility. Oxide ore is generally processed with hydrometallurgy, a process that uses water-based solutions to extract and purify the copper in three stages, heap leaching, solvent extraction, and electro-winning. Sulfide copper ore, on the other hand, is processed using pyrometallurgy, a method of extraction and purification of metals involving the application of heat. This is done in four stages, froth flotation, thickening, smelting, and electrolysis. In the interest of time, we won't go into the details here, but I've put a link to an article describing both processes in the description of this video for those who want to dive deeper. After copper resources have been exhausted in an open pit mine, the mine area must be rehabilitated to minimize environmental damage. This step is crucial to securing the sustainability of the land for future use and ensuring that plant and animal life will be able to once again flourish in the years following the mining operation. So now that we know how copper is mined, let's answer the question of how humanity discovered this incredible metal to begin with. And to do that, we've got to go way back in time to the Copper Age. The Copper Age was one of the greatest eras of cultural development and innovation that paved the way for humanity's creation of an advanced civilization. This time period saw the introduction of copper into societies that up to that point in time used mainly stone tools. This opened up a myriad of previously unattainable options and changed the course of history forever. There are several characteristics that make copper superior to its stone predecessor as a material to manufacture tools. Firstly, it is recyclable. If a copper tool were to break or be rendered ineffective through general wear and tear, the copper can be removed, melted down, and reformed into another implement 
with no loss of overall quality. Additionally, copper has the perfect balance of malleability and durability to be both convenient to forge and repair and strong enough to form implements such as farm tools or weapons of war. As a result, tribes and cultures that had early access to copper gained a massive advantage over those still stuck in the Stone Age. The Copper Age arose in different parts of the world at different times. Some societies and cultures discovered it sooner and others were later to the party, but evidence points to it beginning around the 5th millennium BC to the early 3rd millennium BC. The discovery of copper caused new cultures to form, new trade routes to flourish, and new battle tactics to be developed based on access to copper weapons and armor that changed the dynamics of warfare. It also had a marked impact on economies, with copper mining and manufacturing providing a new means of income in society. The Copper Age also saw the earliest known state societies, meaning a centralized political organization creating and enforcing rules over its citizens. The development of these societies was one of the major evolutions of human civilization, as towns and cities became more populated, and ideas and concepts were more freely able to be shared and adopted, leading to further innovation. Copper with sulfur in it was stronger and more resilient to wear and tear, and this was the preferred form of the metal for implements of war. This was discovered from a certain form of copper that contained naturally occurring sulfur. The downside of this enhanced final product was steep, however, as the fumes it produced when being forged could poison those working with it, sometimes fatally. It was later found that by adding a small amount of tin to copper, it made it even stronger than the sulfur without the dangerous side effects. This new metal became known as bronze, and the Bronze Age began in earnest. But we shall leave that tale to the pages of history for now, as we instead look ahead to the future of copper in our modern era. Our journey, from using copper to build advanced societies in the Copper Age, to our use today of electrifying the world and facilitating untold innovations, proves this element may be the most important metal in both the history of humanity and the future of our planet. Copper is especially necessary if the new green economy is ever going to be fully realized. But the problem is, the sheer amount of copper needed to power an energy transition is more than has ever been produced up to this point and there are not anywhere near the amount of producing mines online to meet the growing demand. Add to this the fact that the same so-called green politicians calling for the world to go fully net zero are also staunchly against mining of all kinds, and the prospect of enough copper mines being developed in any reasonable amount of time is slim indeed. These mines take decades and anywhere from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars to bring from discovery of a copper deposit to a producing mine. And so the supply demand fundamentals for the metal likely means that the price of copper will continue to rise in the years ahead. In fact, a report from SMP Global on copper stated, projected annual shortfalls will place unprecedented strain on supply chains. The challenges this poses are reminiscent of the 20th century scramble for oil, but may be accentuated by an even higher geographic concentration for copper resources and the downstream industry to refine it into products, unless massive new supply comes online in a timely way. The goal of net zero emissions by 2050 will be short-circuited and remain out of reach. The push for net zero aside, a new middle class is starting to emerge in developing economies around the globe. And this means more electrification, as they gain access to the lifestyle enjoyed in the developed world. And that means much more copper will be needed. It may not have the prestige of gold and silver, but when it comes to practical applications and getting the job done, few metals on the planet can match up with copper. And that is why its ascension is almost assured as the world's population grows and its citizens upgrade their way of life in the years to come. Commodity Culture is a series on commodities and natural resources. If you would like to see more, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you're always up to date with the latest episodes.